Now today is a very special day. It was 181 years ago today, March 2nd, that the great state of Texas declared independence from Mexico, which sort of paved the way for our opportunity to drive one of Texas' newest residents. Sort of. I'm reaching, I know. But we're in Texas. We got not too much horsepower in a CVT, but let's put our foot into it anyway. Now this is normal mode. Remember, the torque doesn't come in for a while on this engine. And you got a CVT, it's, it kind of goes. Um, I think we should try this again, but this time in sport mode. Now let's stop. We've got a little bit of an uphill, which gives this just a bit more of a challenge. Now, I don't know what's going on here, but there's no separate sport button, even though there is like a, a, a spacer for a button I don't know why they don't put it here. Ergonomically, it's much smarter, but here you gotta go into a menu to drive mode and then go up to sport. We're not even wasting our time on eco. And with that, let's put our foot into it. Now we're in sport mode. Uh, don't notice a huge difference. It's not underpowered. That's what's interesting. Not underpowered at all. It's, it's just a four cylinder with a CVT. So, um, yeah, would I want more power? Of course I would. There's never such a thing as too much power, especially in a place like Texas. But in this case, for the job at hand, not at all underpowered. So over a lot of recent episodes, you and I have been talking about construction methods, specifically the materials used in construction. And the trend nowadays is a lot of high strength steel, but then there's also the whole idea of lowering weight. And this is really no exception. However, the way Kobusan did it, he approached it a bit differently. Uh, so yes, there is some aluminum here, but it's in unique places. Like for example, parts of the platform where there are some ladder braces, those are aluminum. And then all of the bits of the shock towers where the McPherson struts or the dampers in the rear, all of that is aluminum. I don't know if you've garnered this from watching the show over the years, but I am a huge fan of Texas, particularly Austin, and I've got a break, break, break there a little bit. Uh, so I was able to find one of my favorite roads here to do a little driving dynamics with a car that really, <laughs> not really known for this kind of thing, because it's a platform based on a Prius. But here's what's interesting. It's composed. Granted, there's lean, and the lean is more in the rear uh, than any plow in the front. Instead of doing the usual trailing beam, which you would get in like a B segment car or most C segment cars to save money, uh, this has got the double wishbones. So what does that mean? And well, let's put our foot into it going around this road here. Hopefully there's no local constable. Don't try this at home. We're going around the turn a little faster. And look what happens. It's actually composed, people. Um, I'll be honest with you. I didn't expect it to do this. Granted, is this thing like a GTI? <laughs> no, we're close. But respectable. Absolutely respectable. So, arigato gozaimasu, Kobo-san. So an interesting thing happened back in 2009. Uh, Toyota woke up and said, holy crap, Nissan is selling this Qashqai thing hand over fist in the UK and Europe. We need to do something about it. So they sent Kobasan to Europe and he came up with this car and the whole idea of building them in Turkey and selling them just in Europe. Uh, but then between then and now, something changed. The demand for these types of cars increased, no joke, two to 300%. So then they thought on it and they came up with a whole new plan to build them both in Turkey as well as Japan and sell them in the US as well. But the ones that go to the US come from Turkey. So the people of Turkey, I say, Teşekkürler. Okay, so it's time for me to get a bit pedantic with you folks. Um, overall, I told you in the uh, tech review, really like the design of this interior. But let's talk about the usability when it comes to driving. Uh, number one, the shifter, the satin finish, really like the detail they put in here. But the fact that it has this shape and especially this tactile feel, it makes you want a manual transmission all the more. 
um, and I believe there's one on offer in Europe. Uh, then there's this infotainment system, and it's really, there's no info, there's tainment. Meaning you can connect your phone, I don't know what the hell AHA is, Toyota seems to really be stuck on this. Uh, but that's all you can do, and you've got this beautiful screen. I don't know why you wouldn't offer a navigation, and this is the fancy one with the push-button start, the heated seats, and the power lumbar support. So that's it's missing something there, and frankly, a huge miss for the target market to not have Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Um, I, I'm still out on the diamonds uh, repeating on the interior we talked about in the tech review. Uh, I do think huge miss, no sunroof, at least a, a full glass roof. Again, target market. That's what people in this segment really want. These hipsters with beards in Brooklyn, they don't get any sun, so they need the sun while they're driving the car because they're not going to go to the beach because it ruins the whole hipster look. One thing I will say is huge, the seating position, you can clearly tell. A tall guy who tracks cars was the chief engineer on this car because the hip point, they call it the H point in the, uh, in the car world, it sits lower, which is unique to a crossover because like, when you drive like a juke, you sit a little higher, but here you've got this feeling of it's a little more intimate. But as we go around this declining radius turn here rather quick, please don't try this at home. An H-point does not make an interior alone, and I have to say the combination of the low H-point, the nice tactile feel of these cool buttons on the steering wheel, and the overall, the fit and finish. People, there's a reason why Toyota is one of the biggest car companies in the world is they do a good job screwing cars together. All of that combined makes this a nice place to be. Yes, do I want a sunroof on Apple CarPlay? Of course. But overall, Kobasan has done quite a nice job on the interior here. And now, the boring housekeeping items. Number one. Um, yeah, that fits. Number two, 27 city, 31 highway, 29 combined. Number three, yeah, it says Toyota, but this was gonna be a Scion, so that means it really isn't a base model, it has all sorts of crap in it. Uh, but then there is a fancy model, which gives you like the keyless entry, and well, actually it's not keyless entry, it's the keyless push button start on power lumbar support. And number three, speaking of lumbar, wish me luck on this. What do the old cowboys say? Vaya con Dios. Okay, we're going around my own little personal racetrack here just outside of Austin. It's a secret location. Please don't try this at home. And let's try the brakes, shall we? Come around the turn and then brake, 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 brake. Again, I'm looking for a little hop in the back there but clearly the change to the double wishbone instead of that awful trailing beam makes it even more composed under hard braking. Nice touch on that part. So let's take stock of season seven thus far. We kicked it off with an Aston Martin that had both a V12 and a seven speed dog leg manual transmission, then moved to the new G3540, then the 991.2 turbo. So it would stand to reason I would not be incredibly excited to drive this. However, I stepped off the plane, met Kobasan, then drove the car, and realized this is a hell of a lot of fun to drive. And it's because of the details that Kobasan invested into it, like the double wishbone suspension or some of the other pieces to make it a better car. However, in two episodes now, we've discussed some things that are missing. In this episode, we focused more on things that people in Brooklyn or Los Feliz would miss, like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto or navigation. So my question to you is this. This is a great little platform. Could always use some more power, manual transmission, all-wheel drive, but let's not get pedantic. My question is this. How much would you pay to have something like CarPlay, Android Auto, navigation, or even a sunroof for that matter? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV All in Word, Moto Man TV All in Word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, YouTube is stupid. For some reason, uh, even though you've subscribed to our channel here, you now need to go back and click on notifications to be notified when we have new episodes like this. So please go and click notification. And number two, a fun fact. And this is different than any other fun fact before because the ones I give you are something that happened already. 
Well, this one is about to happen when Scott, David, and I wrap here. I'm gonna get in this thing on Texas Independence Day, and I am gonna bump Lyle Lovett. That's right, you're not from Texas, but Texas wants you anyway.